Okay, so to try and avoid the same incident I had when I took this thing apart, I'm going to go ahead and put this left side trumpet on before I put this thing on jack stands. So I got it laid out on the grass sideways. That way I can just sit it straight down on top of it. I purchased gaskets for it, but the gaskets don't line up, so I'm just going to use some RTV to seal them up. It might make my bearing backlash a little tight, but or not the backlash, but the preload might be a little tight on the carrier bearings. But I don't think it's going to be enough to hurt it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just take some silicone and just draw a bead around the flange there on the center section. And then I'm going to set the axle trumpet down onto it. You notice that's not a very big bead because you don't need a lot of this stuff. Okay, so whenever I go set this trumpet on here, it only line up in one way. And I'm going to use these two studs here to help guide me down in there. Now a couple things to remember when you put your bolts in. You need to put on the brake paw. Now this is one of those parts that I had to buy for the selecto speed conversion. And you also need to put your linch pin holder. I think on this tractor they were right there. I might put them back there, I might put them up here. I'll probably put them right back there. And these are original bolts and these bolts are going to torque to 65 foot pounds and try to try to torque these in a crisscross type pattern so now this is ready to be picked up with the tractor and taken down there and We'll get the carrier in it, or rear differential, and get the other trumpet put on it. Okay, so I was able to get the center section and the trumpet down here without issue. I actually was able to pick it up 
by using the a chain like this bolt right here and to right here on the fender bracket and I lifted it up and it was perfectly level no sway or anything so it worked great obviously I didn't drop it on the ground this time so now it's time to put the actual differential into it and get the other trumpet on it there's a differential with new bearings installed and when I go to set this in there I won't be able to go fully into it because my fingers will not come through here so you're going to have to have a pry bar to kind of push it in and then you're going to have to come through your PTO to lift it up to actually center it once you start getting the trumpet on. So let's go ahead and get this put in here. And I basically just stuck my hand through the PTO to help guide this bearing into the other race. And like I say, this pry bar we'll have down here. kind of lift that differential up to center this side and just like the other side we're gonna silicone it so I need to clean it up make sure it's clean of grease and oil and I gotta do the same thing to the trumpet and now we just take our silicone we're gonna put another small bead around it like we did on the other side and you don't you don't need to glob this stuff on here because once you bolt this stuff down it smashes pretty thin just as long as you have a continuous bead you should be fine Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get my jack stand over here ready. Okay, and just like the other side, torque it down to 65. Okay, so there's that trumpet on. Alright, so I'm getting ready to put this transmission onto the rear end of the tractor. There's a couple things you need to remember to do while you're doing that. Because once you install this, it's not coming back off. First thing is, you're going to have a gasket that goes all around this perimeter here. And it'll slide on here, and these little studs here will help hold it in place. The next thing you're going to need is o-rings on both of these hydraulic tubes down here. Your small one is a dash 114. Your large one is a dash 216. And I'll put the actual measurements on that on the bottom of the video so you can match them up if you don't have the dash numbers. Next thing is make sure you have your output shaft and your drive shaft coupler installed. Once you put this transmission on 
you cannot slide this coupler on. So if you install it just like that, you're screwed. You're going to have to pull your transmission back off to install this guy. So be sure that all of these pieces, both of them here, are on the back of your transmission when you go to slide it on. Alright, so let's go get this thing put on now. is now reattached to the rear end yes the engines rebuilt and could technically be put on right now however I want to get the front frame rails and the front steering bolster done first you know sandblasted and painted that way I can set the jack stands on those rails for the simple fact you know the engine has that sheet metal oil pan and I don't want to support the whole front of that tractor on that oil pan so those rails are big, heavy, cast iron, forged steel, something. I don't know, but they're heavy as crap. So that's what I'm going to do next. Get those sandblasted, get those painted. They'll go on, and the engine will go on pretty much all at you know, one time. Now they got the motor bolted to the tractor. I'm gonna go ahead and get these side rails put on. That way I can put some jack stands up here and help support this front end. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my two bolts that are back here and get them put on so I can slide the rail onto it. I did change the isolator bushing, insulator, however they want to call it, up here at the front. And they are available from New Holland, but they're about $70 a piece. I have seen some people say they've used like leaf spring bushings, but I didn't want to chance it, so I just got them, got them from New Holland. These bolts take a large amount of torque, and the tractor's kind of tippy right this minute. So I'm not going to torque them just yet. I'm going to wait until I get this front end on the frame, or the jack stands on the frame rails rather, before I torque them.
Okay, so there's that side frame rail just loosely put on. Well, loosely is a relative term because I do have the bolts somewhat tight. So before this frame rail here goes on, I got to put on this hydraulic manifold. Well, these two O-rings right here, this is a dash 214, this is a dash 216. I'm just going to kind of snug these bolts. And I'll tighten them down once the pump is put on. That way I have some wiggle room to maneuver the pump in here. And I will put enough pressure on it to hold the O-ring. Go ahead and get my bolts in here and get them ready. slide this frame rail on. Okay, so now that I got that installed, I'm going to resituate the tractor so it sits more solidly on the stands, and then I'll get everything torqued down. As you see, I got the motor and the front frame rails on it. It's actually starting to look like something again. So I took this thing apart November of last year. So there's what one year of work looks like. That's why it takes me so long. <laughs>